and talk about the NCAA matchups that happened last night. And we, I was, I didn't watch the first half of the the first game that went down at 6:40. I'm just going to pull up the box scores real quick on that game, just so I know exactly what happened. Let me just pull this up real quick. So yeah, it was Howard going up against Wagner. I did not see the majority of the first half, but I did see the second half. I was there for the second half. I mean, forgive me, I am a busy student um, at this school, so I don't really have time for every single game of basketball. But this game was really close. Like, I will say, it didn't start out that way. Like, um, how Wagner was up 38-27 to 27 after the first half, but then it really started to pick up a lot later going into um it really started to pick up later going into the second half and that's usually how a lot of these um these march madness tournament goes like most of the time they would have one team be the dominant team like in full in what seems to be in full control of the game however then the next then once the next half goes in they make the adjustments they sort of compose themselves and eventually they make the game a lot more interesting and I was really, I really thought that Howard was going to end up winning this game, but unfortunately, they ended up losing at the very last minute. The final score was seventy-one to sixty-eight. It was just extremely painful the way that they lost because the team ended up getting like two offensive rebounds, and they needed they needed a three in order to like um in order to tie the game and force the game into overtime. And they just couldn't buy a three. Now, there was one instance in that game where it seemed like one of the players was fouled on a three-point shot. And I really, really, like, I was expecting a foul because I'm, I understand, like, the refs are a lot more lenient in, in college basketball when they're doing the NCAA tournament. Like, you might, you might see, like, debates and you might see, like, controversial no calls or controversial calls that um happen in these games and it really affects the outcome going going forth and it's like this it's they're very lenient the refs are very very lenient when um what's it called when going into um into this tournament they allow the players to pl get really physical on the defense and a lot of things that you really won't a lot of things that you don't think they're allowed to do in the NBA it does it like they're allowed to do in college and it's like they don't it doesn't get called now the reason why i'm bringing this up is because on one of the plays the player did not have any room to land and if you're watching nba basketball and the shooter doesn't have room to land most of the time it's going to be a defensive foul and that results in three free throws if you're beyond the three point line so i felt like they missed a call late in that game but at the same time like i do understand like okay these players like you know they he might have missed the call but at least they sort of let the um at least they let the players play and do their th then do their own thing if that makes sense because it's like you always would like you would hope that the game would be determined by um the players more so than it would be determined by the ref and that was that was a problem that a lot of people had uh, during the Super Bowl uh, two years ago when Kansas City went up against the Eagles, where there was a huge no call, and um, actually no, there was a pardon me, there was a flag thrown on what people believed should have been a no call, and it definitely soured the opinions of a lot of Eagles fans and a lot of fans who just don't like Patrick Mahomes, and. I sort of understand that logic because it's like, just let the players play. But if it's a foul, call it. Call it the way it is. It's a foul. But but I digress on that entire um, on that entire thing. So the next game that happened was the University of if the game if the box scores would load, the University of Virginia, the Virginia Cavaliers going up against uh, Colorado State University. Now this game Oof. I have absolutely no idea how I was able to sit through this game. It was extremely tough. And the reason why I say it was tough is because the score going into um 
the half was 27 to 14. So obviously both teams were nervous and and that's totally fine. Like they're students and they got a lot more things to to worry about more so than a, a tournament game on top of the fact that they really care about this tournament game. So the pressure it can really get to um, it can really get to some of these students, and this is sort of what like why the title is the way it is. The madness has begun because it's like, good lord, that first half score twenty seven to fourteen. That is a boring game to watch, and I don't want to be I don't want to sound rude or anything, but it's like it was really like it gets really boring, and obviously when it's like they're um, what's it called when they're teams are not hitting shots some might argue that it's like oh they're just playing really good defense but sometimes no that's not the case sometimes the case could be that they're just missing a bunch of shots and that's what was happening everyone was missing all sorts of shots and what was absolutely absurd was how when virginia was going into the fur into the half like i'd say maybe like five minutes left they went like they went cold they straight up could not hit a shot to save their life. And it took them 50 minutes of real time to get a basket. Like, the last time they scored a point was at 9.50 p.m. And then they went cold. And then their next bucket that they scored was at, like, 10.40. It was unbelievable. They opened up the half missing practically every single shot until like i'd say maybe the when it was like the 15 minute mark around there i don't remember exactly i do remember exactly the time of when they scored which was like around 10 40 um at night and that time frame of uh what's it called? that time frame of not really like um that time frame of not scoring like it is in real time so it's not like in game time that's still a very long time of not seeing the ball go in the hoop and when you're when your team is struggling like that you sort of like you need to see the ball go in go in the hoop so that way you can sort of maintain that rhythm like or like try to get a rhythm going into going into the half like that was not an ideal start for for virginia whatsoever going into the going into the second half and they really went out extremely sad to um to Colorado State. Now, Colorado State sort of did like they started out cold, but like they were up 27-14 obviously, but they still started out relatively cold because they were nervous. This team definitely showed that they're a lot better at composing themselves going into this game because again, going into the second half, they were the team that was scoring. They were the dominant team scoring all of the baskets and getting the stops. And it was really bad. Virginia was airballing on threes. They were missing wide open mid ranges. It was really bad shooting from Virginia. And Colorado was able to sort of capitalize on this with their defense and their offense being so elite. And it's like when you see the other team is missing shots and you're hitting shots you're gonna go on a run especially in college basketball and i sort of held on to like virginia trying like i didn't have them winning in this game but i definitely held on to them because obviously like since it's march madness anything could happen and it's like it, it could be any moment in the game where the other team just doesn't hit shots and you're the team that ends up hitting shots like it could have gone the other way around and obviously like it's it's a very sad way to go out if you're Virginia, but the teams that ended up now Wagner is going to be the 16th seed going into this going into this tournament, and Colorado State is going to be the 10th seed going into the tournament, and the matchups that are happening today are going to be if the, the thing would load so that way I could read Grambling State going up against Montana State. This is for the 16th seed, and the next game after that is Colorado, not Colorado State, Colorado, like, you know, Coach Prime Colorado, and Boys State. So, the teams that I think are going to make it out, I I have a strong feeling in, in Grambling State winning this, and Colorado, the Colorado game is a little bit more, like, it's a little bit up in the air. It is a toss-up, and that's going to be the game to watch um, tonight. But I do think that... Colorado, the Buffaloes, they do have the best chance of making it 
to the tournament. Well, they are in the tournament, excuse me. I think they have the best chance of representing their team and winning this uh, the first four matchups because they have a much better record than they have a better record than Oregon and Oregon's usually really good at basketball. And I just I don't want to say that it's like a bias because of like Coach Prime. I understand Coach Prime has nothing to do with basketball and he's more football, but I really like I really like Colorado as a school and I really like all of their like sports programs. So I hope that they end up winning this matchup and they could represent their team from the the Pac-12 going into this going into the tournament and Boys State they will they will definitely pull up a, they would definitely put up a challenge. Like I'm not saying that it's going to be definitely Colorado however be and like a lot of other people who a lot of other analysts who voted and made their brackets it's sort of skewed between like or it's sort of like they have no idea between who's going to win between Colorado and who's going to win between boys so it's a very it's a toss up again like i said previously so i really hope that Colorado ends up winning because i was already wrong literally the very first game I was already wrong on my predictions, and I don't like it. It's not a good sign. Like, I'm 50-50 right now. I'm, I'm one out of two uh, in these predictions, and I really do not like being one out of two because when you actually go on into the bracket, I'm going to get really scared. Like, I know for... I just know for a fact that <laughs> the first game of, like, the real tournament in the first round, it's going to be... It's going to be wrong. Completely wrong in my favor just because of this. And it's like... The way that Howard lost, the way that they lost is just, it was, it was very, very sad because it's like they had opportunity after opportunity and they just couldn't capitalize on it. And I was just, I was so sad. I was so distraught because I, I made the bracket with, I made the bracket with one of my roommates. Like, um, I helped him out. Like, which team is going to end up winning? And I'm like, it should be Howard. Like, definitely should be Howard. And it's like, the very first game, it was, it was wrong. And I'm just, I just have bad luck. <laughs> I just have bad luck with these tournaments. And it's partly the reason why I don't want to give any of you guys my predictions. Because I just think they're going to end up being wrong with the way that I've, with the way that my brackets have been turning out the last few years, Purdue, I'm, re it's like, it's not looking good. It's just not looking good for me. So, but I digress. Now with that, we're out of time with this first segment. So now I'm going to pivot over to NBA basketball and talk about LeBron James and his podcast with JJ Redick. Some of the things that was said, some of the things to expect, my opinions on it that kind of thing. So I'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 